Have you been wondering why your body has not been able to get rid of the HPV virus? Have you tested positive for high-risk HPV and it's been positive for more than two years or potentially on and off for even five or 10 or 15 years? If so, then you have likely thought to yourself, what the heck, why can't my body get rid of this virus? And you may have even heard from a practitioner that it's not possible to get rid of the virus. I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. To me, it's simply a matter of looking deeper. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing three of the main situations that I find are happening when women are not able to clear the virus. And these are all three situations that we can address and therefore help you to clear the virus. So whenever HPV has been testing positive, this is high-risk HPV types associated with cervical cancer and other types of cancer in the body. When it's been testing positive for more than two years, it's considered to be persistent. And the reason why it's considered persistent is because we also know from research that 90% of people who are testing positive for HPV will clear the virus within two years. First of all, that means that it's possible for the human body to clear the virus, and that is well established in the research. In fact, it's known that over 80% of us are exposed to the HPV virus by the age of 50, and yet not everyone who is exposed to the virus will test positive to the virus. So we have to be asking ourselves, what is going on here? What is it that's allowing some people to clear the virus and other people to not clear the virus. Now, at first, it can seem like we want to first point at the virus. Is it because it's a high-risk virus? Is it because a certain strain of the virus, right? Is it because there's a certain strain that's harder to get rid of? Well, what I see in practice is that it's not about having a certain type or strain of HPV. All the high-risk HPV virus types have the potential to become persistent. The thing that determines whether it will become persistent is the health of the host. Is your body's health, is your body's immune system and ability to protect you from the virus. If you're susceptible in your internal environment, then that's what makes a greater risk, risk of persistent HPV, meaning harder to get rid of it. And the thing is that I feel very upset that there are women struggling with HPV and HPV-related abnormal cells and cancer around the world every day. In fact, of, there's for over 4,000 cases of cervical cancer diagnosed every year in the United States alone. <clears throat> and there are women who are having to go through painful biopsies and procedures to remove abnormal cells caused by HPV, and yet these procedures do not address the virus. And so it could be that they have a procedure, have the cells and tissue removed, and then within a year, it recurs again because the standard medical system doesn't help them to address the reason why their body wasn't addressing the fending off the virus in the first place. So one of the easiest ways to think about this is the immune system, right? It's our immune system that is built to protect us from infections like HPV virus. And HPV is different than other viruses in that our immune system can clear it to negative and keep it negative even if we're re-exposed to the virus. So Yes, there's many ways we can support our immune system. Things like vitamin C, vitamin D, even antiviral herbs, mushroom extracts, and more. There's so many opportunities with natural substances to support the immune system. But what I always encourage you to do is to ask why. Why is it that your immune system is depleted in the first place? Why is it that your immune system and your other protective mechanisms in your body are not protecting you from this HPV virus when we know that it's possible to protect you from it? 
And by asking this very vulnerable question, which requires us to look within and to realize that it's not about being something personal and it's not something to be embarrassed about because we're most all exposed to this virus. It's about reflecting on your the truth of what's happening in your body, taking the time to analyze that, potentially invest in specialty testing to show you what's going on inside your body, and then getting expert health help to help you to address whatever it is that's causing a depletion in your immune system and your protective mechanisms. So let me go through three common patterns that I see in my practice of scenarios where women become susceptible in their body especially, but it also can affect in your mind. Um, It makes you more susceptible to the HPV virus and cause it to be persistent and cause it to cause abnormal cells over and over again. The first scenario is stress and trauma. Women who I talk to every day, thousands of them from around the world, report experiencing severe stress and trauma within two years of finding out that they are testing positive for HPV virus. The stress and trauma causes a cascade of effects throughout the body and the nervous system and and even the emotional system. These effects lead to greater susceptibility, and they include everything from having high or low cortisol, which is our stress hormone, right? So if we're under stress and trauma, it's going to affect our stress hormones, cortisol, and adrenaline as well. And that alone causes a depletion in the immune system and immune function. But also the stress and trauma cause disruption in our digestive tract to our microbiome. And the gut microbiome is related to the vaginal microbiome. And when either or both are disrupted by stress, that makes us more susceptible because we know that the microbiome is there to protect us from foreign viruses like HPV virus. Also, the stress and trauma causes leaky gut which is not as healthy intestinal cells, so you're not as able to absorb nutrients. It can lead to blood sugar imbalances, as well as emotional and neurological distress. So we need to be helping women to recover from stress and trauma and to rebalance what has been thrown off by stress and trauma because these things can be addressed. They can be identified and addressed so that women can protect themselves from HPV and recover from stress and trauma at the same time. I know how scary it is to test positive for HPV virus. And I know it's even more concerning when your gynecologist tells you that all you can do is wait and see if it continues and if it causes abnormal cells. That's exactly why, as a naturopathic doctor and midwife, that I feel so passionate about helping women to be proactive about protecting themselves from HPV virus. I've been helping thousands of women for the past 23 years to do exactly that and to get HPV to negative and stay negative. And that's why I developed the Say Goodbye to HPV online program where you can get access to my proven protocol from wherever you are in the world. So I hope you will come check out the Say Goodbye to HPV program, review the success cases, and see if this is going to be a good fit to help you get your life back from HPV. The second scenario that I see very often is toxin exposure. Women often don't realize that they're being exposed to toxins in even personal care products that they could be putting on their skin. Personal care products and spermicides vaginally disrupt the vaginal microbiome and the vaginal environment and expose us to toxins. When we're exposed to toxins, including potentially mold toxins from water-damaged buildings and also environmental toxins in our water, in our air, for example, These toxins disrupt the vaginal microbiome and environment. They disrupt something called methylation, which is how our B vitamins help us detoxify. So if we're not, we're exposed to toxins and we're not detoxifying well, let alone if we, some women have an MTHFR and other gene variations, which also make it harder for them to detoxify. 
This leads to more nutrient deficiencies and suppression of the immune system. So what I find is that it is so essential for women to identify that they're being exposed to toxins, potentially do specialty testing to identify which toxins they're being exposed to so they can figure it out and stop that exposure, as well as to complete a very safe and effective detoxification program so that they can get the toxins out of their bodies once and for all, and then change their exposure risk, change their products they're being exposed to, get filtered water, filtered air, and protect themselves from toxins so that they can better protect themselves from HPV. I find that when women go through my detoxification program, they can clear the HPV virus in record time. The third scenario that I want to talk about today is simply nutrient depletion. I so often find, and I think this is because women are taught to push themselves so hard to work long hours and sleep less hours, to do more, to help others and take care of their families. They're not doing a good job at taking care of themselves in the long run. And oftentimes women then decide to do something like follow a vegan or vegetarian diet. And oftentimes with a vegan or vegetarian diet, that person is not getting enough protein, iron, and B vitamins, very common with a vegetarian or plant-based diet. This can also happen, by the way, when someone's following a too extreme intermittent fasting or any kind of extreme diet. Because what happens when we're following an extreme diet or have extreme fasting is we have less nutrients coming in. We end up depleted of protein and again, depleted of nutrients like iron and B vitamins, which are essential for fending off HPV. If those nutrients are essential for our immune system, for our detoxification, and also for healthy cell production. So if the virus is coming in and damaging cells and we don't have enough nutrients to counteract it, then that virus is going to get to do what it does, which is cause abnormal cells. The other thing that can happen from all of this depletion of nutrients is that women are likely to have imbalances in their hormones, maybe higher estrogen levels. They're not detoxifying estrogen as well, as, and they also may then develop heavy periods where they're losing more iron and B vitamins in the heavy menstrual flow. They may have he- uh, painful periods, endometriosis, fibroids, leading to iron deficiency, leading to thyroid deficiency, as well as depletion of their neurotransmitters, which means they end up experiencing a lot of anxiety and depression and sleep issues, as well as vaginal infections, yeast and BV. It's all a state of depletion. Everything gets more and more depleted, including then leaving them with this inability to fend off HPV. So if any of those three scenarios sounds like maybe might be the case for you, then I welcome you to contact me. Contact my office. You can always set up a time to talk to my team about your case and think about whether you, you would like to have my help to help you to resolve any or all three of these scenarios because these are all things that you can recover from. And it's, again, by asking the question, why? Why can are you not clearing the virus? Why is your immune system and your other protective mechanisms not helping you? What's going on there? And when we ask those questions and we dig deeper and we do the specialty testing that gives us the information we need, we can find out if you have nutrient deficiencies. We can find out if you have toxins in your body. We can find out if there's methylation issues, detoxification issues, hormone imbalances. We can find these things out. And when we finally do figure out what's underlying and resolve those things, which is what I do as a naturopathic doctor and women's health expert is help you to resolve all of those imbalances so that you can then get back to feeling your best and your body can get back to protect the V virus. So again, no matter which high risk type you have and no matter how long you've had it, I've worked with women who've been dealing with this virus 
for more than 10 years. And I've worked with all the different high-risk types of HPV. And all of those scenarios, we've been able to get rid of the virus. And we do that by looking deeper, by understanding what's making you susceptible and how to rebuild your protective mechanisms. And amazingly, in the process, we end up helping you to learn how to protect yourself going forward, to protect yourself from HPV virus, but also to protect yourself from stress, from trauma, from toxins, and from depletions by learning how to take better care of yourself while taking care of others. Ultimately, we can only take care of others if we're taking good care of ourselves. So I would love to be able to help you to learn what's happening in your body help you to heal the relationship with your body. Because a lot of times women find that they're they're feeling so critical of being in this situation that they can actually be angry and in a battle with their own self and their own body. And that's an important part of the emotional healing that can happen as well. So that you can actually get to the point of getting rid of HPV and protecting yourself from it coming back again, even if you're exposed again. And put an end, break this cycle of repeat procedures and recurrent fear about what this virus could do to your body, your health, and your life going forward. So if this resonates with you and you would like more help, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Comment below. Let me know. And I look forward to connecting with each and every one of you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to How Humans Heal. If you liked this episode, leave a rating and a review. And for more resources, visit drdonnie.com.